Justin Tibbetts here, financial advisor with Jazz Wealth Managers. How you doing today? Today's a little bit for my geeks out there. We're going to go through gold. I get a lot of questions. Justin, should I go to some gold, man? Recession's coming. Should I go to gold? Well, I don't know. <laughs> right? It's not my opinion it doesn't matter anyways. We like to look at stats here. Everything I do is based on data, right? I can't afford to let my opinion get in the way of the funds that we manage on our website there. That's why we actually lay out exactly how they're managed and everything. I can't allow my opinion to get in the way of someone's particular goal. So when people ask me, should I have some gold in my portfolio? Uh, what should I do? Uh, customers want to know. I, I try to help and go into detail there. So I was sort of kicking around here, playing with some data, and I thought I'd just go ahead and record it and play along with you here. Let's dive in. We'll make this one short. Here is the price of gold in dollar terms uh, going back to uh, 1978, right? Going back as far as we could because the gray shaded areas in here uh, mark recessions. So every gray area that you see, these little overlining areas here, uh, those are the start to the end of each recession since then. And I wanted to get enough you know, periods of recession in there for you. Uh, so since that point, going all the way back here to uh, 1979, beginning of 79, uh, price of gold has risen 570%. All right, that sounds impressive, but let's dig a little bit deeper. We'll first go back to the last recession here. We'll say this started, uh, what, we'll call it December 31st, uh, or let's just call it January 08, until we can get closer here to April 2009. So January 2008, uh, and then we'll zoom in here to get really close. January 5th, 2009, or June 5th. June 5th, uh, 2009. Let's zoom right in there. And actually, it's going to be June 3rd if we want to pick really specifically there. The price of gold returned 17.15% over the course of an entire recession. Rather short one, or not rather short. That was a nasty one, but <laughs> uh, you got a recession there. Uh, gain of about 17%. Uh, so no problem there. Let's zoom back out. And let's go to this other one here. We'll take a look at uh, January 31st, 2001. January 31st, 2001, and see, well, it's actually going to be a couple days after that. We'll go to October 29, 2001, and see where we end up here with this one. Well, that's March, so we got to go all the way to March. All right, we'll go to March 1st. Oh, March 1st. Yeah, 2001. Okay, average return there, uh, or total return, was 4.6% through that recession. So, uh, not great, right? And if you notice, the last one, we actually sold off through most of the recession in the price of gold. This started initially, but then uh, we call it basically a sloppy uptrend, right? So, a decent return on your money there. And in fact, if you look back, you actually see that the price of gold returns very little. This was a negative return there. Uh, this was a uh, negative return through the recession. And so the price of gold in general, what does it tend to do? If it has any rallies, it has these weird moments prior to recessions, right? All the way leading up to this one, all the way since then. Now what's going on now? We got a, the gold rallying again. So really, if you're trying to get the big bulk of the rally there, it would seem you have to be into gold during pullbacks before and after the recession. So uh, that's interesting there. Now, can't argue with the return of gold, but let's go back 20 years and just say, Okay, let's assume someone just put 20 years into it. So we'll say exactly 20 years. That gives you two recessions to go through. You still did good. Got about a 500% return. Average annual return for the price of gold over the last 20 years. You can see it right here, but I can't get too close. 9.36%. So it's right up here at the top. Average annual return uh, for that time period there. Now, let's compare it to some things. I mean, obviously, this is a good return. It seems rather stable. We didn't see any major drawdowns through recession. So you know that if you want to invest in gold, you're not expected to see massive drawdowns. You may not get one that has a, a, a gain during a recession, but the last two did. Uh, and actually, two out of the five last recessions uh, were negative returns, just minor negative returns. Uh, but let's compare it to like the S&P. Uh, we better use total return. Get the dividends in there as well. There you go. So over the last 20 years, the orange line now is the S&P total return, average return 5.77% relative to gold, outpacing the S&P over the last 20 years. Uh, so that makes it kind of attractive. Doesn't mean you want to avoid the S&P or anything related to it. It just means that if you wanted to have some gold in your portfolio, it seems that you couldn't argue with that. Let's try uh, the NASDAQ. How about the NASDAQ composite, just for fun? Let's see where that thing landed there. There you go. So NASDAQ composite's now your light blue line there at the bottom, 5.31. The S&P 5.77, gold 9.36. So gold outpacing it there just a little bit. Um, if you had mutual funds, let's say, uh, what's the oldest Vanguard fund? Is it the Wellington fund? I believe it's the Wellington. Vanguard Wellington fund, I believe, is 
goes back to the Great Depression. So if we took a look at that, that's going to pull in some different data there. Let's get rid of the forward adjusted returns. There we go. So now your green line, oh, that's not good. Vanguard uh, Wellington Fund, 42% uh, over the last 20 years. Uh, it would appear that you're better off being directly in the um, S&P, the NASDAQ, anything like that. Let's go to the Fidelity, the Fidelity Contra Fund. That's their oldest one, I believe. Fidelity Contra Fund, that one goes back before the Wellington Fund, I believe. And let me just get rid of that. Okay, good. So uh, the pink one there, Fidelity Contra Fund, just outpacing the Wellington Fund, I guess, over that over the 20-year period. I'm not saying the Wellington Fund's a bad fund or Fidelity is a good fund or anything. I'm just saying over this little range here, as we've sort of studied it, um, the Contra Fund looking good as there as well. So if you had to have a diversified mix, the argument to have some gold makes a lot of sense. It doesn't mean, however, that you are going to experience a some sort of rocket ship, some sort of safety net that's going to return lots of money during a recession. So again, if we go back to just the recession there, let me get rid of everything else but the price of gold. Uh, Wellington Fund, Contra Fund. We go back to just the price of gold. You now know if you're looking back, these recessions don't necessarily provide home run returns. It is not a just an obvious got to go after gold sort of uh, product there. So don't go too heavy in gold. That would be my personal opinion. Um, there's nothing wrong with having it. It appears to be the very steady returns through recessions. And, and again, the major drawdowns, no major drawdowns during recessions. Um, that would That's pretty interesting there. Let's go back while, if you're still with me here. Let's go to July 31st, 1981. Those were fun times uh, for the market, not because not I somehow know. Uh, we'll go to December 3rd, 82. December 3rd, 82, we'll zoom in a little bit. It's actually like, yeah, it's going to be a few days before that, but you get the point here. Uh, so staring at basically, what, 6.16% uh, uh, return during that time period there. So still a positive return. Didn't look like it there on the uh, mix there. It looked like it was a rather nasty drop in the beginning of that recession, but overall you end up with a small return. So you can very clearly see that the bulk of the returns do not happen during U.S. recessions, right? So if you're going to have some gold in your portfolio, it's a long-term play. You're going to have it there for the long run. Um, but I would suggest not getting too heavy in the price of gold. You do have, hey, actually, you still here? You still with me? Let's go and see over the last, uh, let's go as far back as we can and put that Wellington fund back up there because I just don't feel like that's right. That, that's a good fund. That shouldn't be hanging out so so far back there. Uh, Wellington Fund, yeah, sure enough, man. Vanguard Wellington Fund, let's get rid of the forward adjusted. Yeah, all right. I, I just, maybe I'm looking at the wrong one. Fidelity, no, that's the right one. I know they're different funds. I know they have different objectives and everything, but I just thought they would do a little bit better there. What about the SPY? If we did the S&P 500, that's gonna be your uh, green line on that one there, yeah. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there you go. They speak for themselves there. Uh, Contra Fund sticking out, obviously more aggressive, more volatile and everything, but uh, at Wellington Fund, let's just get rid of everything and just look at the Wellington Fund here. Son of a gun. All right. Maybe I got the wrong one. Well, let me see. Someone can let me know if I got the wrong one. Yeah, that's the Wellington Fund. Okay. Well, anyways, this wasn't the topic about that. I got distracted. This was a topic about gold. So now you know. We've looked at the data. You can interpret it in your own way if you'd like. Uh, but I'd just like to bring that stuff to you rather than be the guy or the, yep, the YouTuber guy. It's like, invest in gold. Well, prove it to me. Show me when. Like, what's, when, when should I be involved? Should I be scared during recessions or excited? And now you know. You got a little data to back you up there. Hope you enjoyed it. Speaking of data, we cover a lot of data in the closing beat. Uh, we'll be back later today, 5 o'clock Eastern time, live on our YouTube channel, uh, Jazz Wealth Managers uh, on YouTube. We'll cover the stock market, all the good, the bad, and the ugly. I hope to see you there, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Enjoy. Why should you choose Jazz Wealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.